Our next speaker um, is Eileen Evans. She is the financial analyst for the Rocky Mountain Public Banking Institute. Uh, she's done a number of uh, studies for us, and we'll talk about the Denver uh, public banking study that shows what could be actually happen in this city. Uh, Eileen uh, got her uh, bachelor's degree in international affairs from the University of Colorado at Boulder, and she got her master's degree in uh, at, uh, MBA in uh, finance at uh, George Washington University in Washington, D.C. So let's welcome Eileen Evans. She is also a uh, licensed uh, financial advisor. What is the title? I'm, I'm now working for a community bank for the first time, so I'm no longer with the Wall Street banks. I, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm a re recovering Wall Street bank. Um, great. Uh, I just want to address the first question this man asked, how are we being helped by the Public Bank Institute? Um, we're being helped a lot by Ellen and Walt and other people of their other members on their team, and by Santa Fe, San Francisco, Seattle, we read all their studies. We think about how they're approaching this. And I've read the feasibility studies for five cities and several states. And um, we try and learn from their example and apply it to our state. Each state's different, but. Um, we're not the pioneers here. We're learning from their lessons, and it's tremendous. And we share this information on Facebook. Um, we share it via email. So I've been working with Earl about three years on this, and I'd like to say I think the Rocky Mountain Public Banking Group's really moving forward. We're not just an academic exercise. We're meeting with city councils, um, chief economists, chief legal and financial advisors of Denver, Boulder, Longmont. So <clears throat> we think Denver and Boulder are great examples of moving forward with a public bank. And there may be counties too, but we've done pre um, a preliminary feasibility study, and I'm going to share with you Denver. Um, we're also looking at the state of Colorado as well. So. I'll try and go through this pretty quickly. Um, first of all, who thinks Denver's doing great with all this building and construction? Does it look like our city's doing, you know, the wealthiest it's ever been? Anybody feel that way? No. Well, you're right. It's not doing that great. When you look at the numbers and the debt, it's there. They could they could end up like Santa Fe, personally. Um, so the major challenges in Denver today are affordable housing. That's a big one. Um, repairing our roads and bridges and managing the revenue from the cannabis industry. As you know, uh, Denver residents just approved a $945 million bond issue last November. And uh, part of that is for infrastructure repair and actually based on the same numbers that Ellen cited in California, the interest cost that they're going to pay on those bonds over the life of those bonds is going to equal the amount of the bond issue. And this will be the most leverage the city's ever had. They are maxing out their borrowing ability. Um, but they do have a need to manage the 1.5 billion cannabis revenue. So here's a look at Denver's financials. Um, We've identified over $2 billion of cash that is potentially available to be transferred into our public bank for the city of Denver. It's literally taking from one bucket of the city to another bucket of the city. The Bank of North Dakota is an extension of the Treasury Department of the state of North Dakota. So while people think of this as a bank, it's really a treasury function for the city. It's not a bank for us individuals. But we've identified over 2 billion 
cash and, um, and no. so a city has its financials kind of like a company where they have a balance sheet and an income statement. So there's over two billion of equity that is able for us to play with. But actually, just nine years ago, Denver was in its worst financial shape since the Great Depression. And this was very surprising to me. In 2008, 2009, when the banks took us off the cliff, so to speak, because they had too much leverage and debt, and our government had to bail out Chase and JP Morgan, and the banks merged, why, well, how, why does that affect a city like Denver? I know it affected the banking industry. Um, well, it affected the revenues, and I'll tell you why in a minute. That was the largest decline in the city's revenues since the 30s. And our economy didn't suffer that bad. It was bad, but it wasn't like the Depression. So why did Denver's finances take a, such a bad hit? Um, they had bad investments, and they still have bad investments. That's in, very interesting to hear what happened to Santa Fe. So, oh, we're, I'm going to show you some. Yeah. Um, so we think Denver has too much risk in its balance sheet because of its investments. And if I figured this out, digging through the numbers, let's get a real professional in there, or let's ask the city to reveal more. Um, we think um, Denver's taking too much risk and could really have another big hit. Um, why not manage that risk like the Bank of North Dakota does? They, they uh, lend counter-cyclically, like Ellen said. So when the economic downturn hit, they're providing liquidity to small businesses. Denver's didn't do that. If, if it had its own public bank, it could have addressed that in 2008, 2009. So we, we think the bank can save millions of dollars. It, for Denver, we've identified about $12 million extra, just in the equivalent of net profit. And we could reduce the interest paid on the bonds by over 30 million per year. The shortfall in affordable housing, for example, is huge. It's, I don't know if it's a billion, but it's, a, the hundred, it's over 500 million we heard at the sustainability conference. They're having a problem fi finding financial um, vehicles for that. Why not reduce our debt service and, and build affordable homes? Um, I'm going to repeat a little bit what Ellen said because, see, I've learned from her. We've compared the Bank of North Dakota with the banks that Denver's doing business with now, today. So Wall Street versus Bank of North Dakota with its one, one or two branches. So we looked at the Wall Street banks over this period of time that included the big economic downturn, 08, 09. And they had an average return on equity of negative 4.6%. And Bank of North Dakota's was positive. It was counter-cyclical. It was 25%. So when we look, you have to look over a period of time to get the cycles in finance. And the Bank of North Dakota is more than three times profitable than Wall Street banks over a whole cycle. Um, why is Denver investing in those Wall Street banks when they have those big downturns? So yes, Bank of North Dakota is three times more profitable than the Wall Street banks. We've modeled our preliminary study on the Bank of North Dakota and what some other states and cities are doing. There we go. We just show those return on equity numbers. Bank of North Dakota has also been consistent. They don't have that big volatility. They're not investing in the stock market or derivatives like the Wall Street banks are, and like the city of Denver is, too. Citibank is the worst. In 08, they had a negative 30% return on equity. They had to have a bailout, and they haven't been profitable over the last um, six, seven years. That's why the government's bailing them out, and that's exactly why they're too big to fail. So this is getting into the nitty gritty of Denver's investments. And everything highlighted in yellow are risky investments that we think the city shouldn't be investing in. 
and should be investing in a public bank. So we've identified which banks they're working with and which investments. Um, so this common stock, mutual funds, and structured products. Structured products are derivatives. Yeah. And this isn't a pension fund, by the way. This is the city of Denver's you know, reserves from our taxes. So that's over a billion dollars. We want to take that and put it in our public bank and reduce the risk to the city. That's where we're starting from. So the Denver has about five billion in investments and we think a billion of that should not be in the stock market, it should be in a bank, in a more conservative uh, investment vehicle. So about a third of Denver's investments are in um, the equity markets. J.P. Morgan's a city custodian. Um, we know Den or a Boulder divested of uh, Wells Fargo, was it? And now they're voting on divesting of Chase with J.P. Morgan. So cities around the country are divesting from these banks, and I think Denver's taking a look at this. Yeah. Um, so there's still three investments on Denver's books that are derivatives that could go belly up with interest rates going up or actually Denver had swap agreements with Lehman Brothers and Lehman Brothers was one of those banks that went completely bankrupt. That's what affected Denver's finances. Um, so there's still uh, over, almost 300 million that Denver's invested with these banks. This is not transparent accounting. I don't think it's good investments. And it's too risky, too. So we want to divest the city from all derivatives and potentially some of those banks, just like other cities are doing. So Denver's, that's why Denver's finances fell so much. They're acting like a Wall Street bank with their investments. It's incredible. Exactly. Like, they're a private investor. like they're a private investor. And they're taking on credit risk, interest rate risk, other risk, and it's like that's not what they should be doing with our tax money. And we would never do that in a public bank. We'd never even do that in our personal And we don't do that in our personal lives. And I think it's called moral hazard. The, the banks think they can do that because they're bailed out by the government. So we want to get out of that vicious cycle and have nothing to do with it. It's quite amazing Denver has that much still on their books. Didn't they learn the lesson from 0809? Um, so we're going to take um, 50 million to capitalize our bank. And we're going to take 900 million, which is mostly in those uh, stock investments and derivatives, will will be a deposit base, earning the same that it is. Well, actually, it won't earn the same because it's in equities, but it would earn a similar interest rate, like Ellen just said, for California, it's 1.4 percent. That money, we're just taking the 900 million and putting it in a deposit base, and the 50 million. That's city money going from one bucket to another. The benefit of this is we're going to create new loans that will be circulating in the economy and we're anticipating $600 million to start. That's brand new fresh money for small businesses working with community banks. There are definitely are a lot of community banks. Um, so we think by taking almost a billion, that's only 20% of the funds available in Denver. That's a reasonable assumption to start. Um, and, you know, we, we have our projections here. We basically are saying that this, this money would be managed very conservatively and still Denver would have almost 12 million a year of net profit. And the way Bank of North Dakota does that, that becomes a reserve for the city. It's like a rainy day fund. So this would all be new money for the city to manage for the next downturn and not even be, have its finances be um, vulnerable to that. 
I think that's about all I have to say. We are looking specifically at areas of need, uh, affordable housing, small business lending, energy efficient loans. So we've had several discussions with city council members, um, the mayor's office, and we keep moving forward. Like, so thank you.